Well, good afternoon, ladies. It's an absolute honour and pleasure to be here with you today to talk about a topic that I'm extremely passionate about. The theme around International Women's Day centres around equality and how each one of us has a role to play in gender equality. And that could not be further from the truth when it comes to the matter of finances and financial literacy. Whilst as a country we've come a long way in gender equality in many areas of our lives, we still have a very long way to go when it comes to financial equality between men and women. Despite women being more educated and empowered than ever before, we still find ourselves in a world where women over the age of 55 years old are amongst the highest homelessness rate in the country. In only the last five years, the percentage or the risk that over 55 year old women will go into homelessness has increased by 30%. This is a very big problem. Despite the focus on reducing the pay gap, we still find ourselves in a position where women are earning 14% less than men for doing an equivalent job. We also find ourselves in a world where Australian women are retiring with half the amount of super of Australian men, despite the fact that we will outlive our male partners. So let's just explore some of this in more detail. Firstly, let's explore the terrible, terrible statistic that, that touches our over 55 year old females. The reality is that we're seeing more and more females later in life becoming homeless and finding themselves in financial ruin due to divorce or separation late in life, due to financial abuse or domestic violence, or simply due to death of a loved one who was solely responsible for taking care of the financial management. This is unacceptable. In my line of work, I meet women every day, intelligent women, successful women, who have done very well in their careers, and yet for the last 20 years, their male partner has been able to hide from them a gambling addiction, or has been able to hide from them bankruptcy. And these are intelligent women who didn't see the signs. And as a result, they have been left in financial ruin. This has to stop. Unfortunately, the situation is not much better for our young, yeah, our young Australian females. We find that young Australian females aged between 14 to 25 are now better educated than their male counterparts, and yet they lack the financial literacy to even understand the basic concepts of finance-related matters like superannuation, salary sacrifice, investing, these are important things they need to understand to help them in their life. There was a recent study conducted for young Australians aged between 14 to 25, and it actually surveyed both females and males in this category. And it was found that whilst the females were more highly educated than the males who were part of the study, 83% of the females in the study showed a low to moderate financial literacy, which meant that they couldn't answer most of the basic questions that were asked in relation to financial matters. It was also found that only 17% of the females in the study had a high level of financial literacy compared to 27% of the males. It was also found that the females in the study had 58% more debt than the males in the study. And this debt included their HEX debt and HELP debt, credit cards, car loans, personal loans. So clearly we have a situation where young females are not getting the education and understanding that they need to effectively develop the financial management skills that are going to serve them well through life. 
That was further shown in the fact that participants were surveyed and asked whether they felt that they were, com whether they were completely in control of managing their finances. 21% of women said yes, compared to 31% of men. So clearly, even the young female Australians are lacking the confidence to actually manage their finances and make important financial decisions. Now as women, I'm a mother myself, so I understand that we juggle many things in our lives. We have many thoughts and many worries and many concerns and many day-to-day -day stresses. But research has actually found that finance is our number one worry. It's the thing that keeps us up at night the most. And 46% of Australian females have reported to being financially stressed and feeling very stressed about money making day-to-day -day money decisions. Seems we're actually, it's not just that we're not comfortable managing money, we're also uncomfortable even talking about money. Some of you might even be feeling uncomfortable about today's topic. A recent survey found that more women would prefer to get naked in front of their family and friends than discuss financial matters. So, the question is, why is this? Why is it that we live in a society where 85% of the women are actually managing the day-to-day -day family bills, the groceries, the weekly expenses, but yet we're leaving the big finance decisions to the men? Why are we letting the men decide on the car purchase? Why are we letting the men decide on the mortgage to choose, the home purchase? Why are we allowing the men to decide on our investments? Why is it that women are disengaging and leaving the financial control and the big decisions to someone else? And in doing this, in, in leaving the decisions to someone else, women are losing their freedom. They are losing their ability to make choices in their life. I find it incredibly upsetting to see women that feel trapped in a situation because they don't have the confidence and understanding to walk away mainly because of the financial position. A recent study done said that two thirds of females who were considering separation from their partners were not separating from their partners only due to a fear of having to be financially independent and having to take over the financial management themselves. That means that two thirds of these women who are considering separation are only staying in their relationships because of a fear of not knowing how to manage their finances. I say it's time to change. I say that when you allow someone else to manage your finances and someone else to make your finance decisions, you're giving your power away. It's time to stand up and reclaim your power. It's time that we all educate ourselves because with financial empowerment comes greater confidence, greater choices, greater freedom in every area of our lives. And the knowledge that you can continue through life and make the decisions that are right for you without being financially reliant on anyone else. Let's discuss the solutions. And many Australians think that the solution is to close the pay gap. They think that if we can get the pay gap closed, then that will be enough. In my opinion, that's not enough. Closing the pay gap is definitely essential. But the problem that we're facing is that Australian females are lacking confidence. Even with a higher pay, they're lacking the confidence to be able to make the financial decisions that they need to make to be able to move forward with their life. There was a study recently done with millennials who were earning the same income. Both men and women in this study were earning the same income. 
And what the study actually found, that despite the fact that they were earning the same income, the women in the study felt less confident to make financial decisions and were more likely to hand those decisions to a male partner or to ignore the decisions altogether and do nothing. But on the flip side of that, whilst we're lacking the confidence, the research shows that our ability is just as good as men. And as a woman, I would argue it's even better. So we have the ability, but we're lacking the confidence. It's not a question of intellect or intelligence. We have the intellect, we have the intelligence. So what it actually means is that it is our confidence and perception that we must change. And it starts with you, and it starts with me, and it starts with all of us taking ownership and control over the issue, taking ownership and control over our own financial position after our, after our own financial situation and changing our relationship with money so that we can be empowered and confident to manage our own finances. I hope to leave you with five things today that I think everyone every Australian female needs to focus on to ensure that they do their part to create gender financial equality. The first thing is we must focus on positive self-talk. As women, it is said that we have 80,000 thoughts a day on average. And it is also said Psychologists believe that seven out of every ten of those thoughts are negative. So it's no wonder why as women we feel incompetent or hopeless at doing certain things and finances is no exception. But it's all in our mind. Like I said, we're just as good as the males, if not better. We have the intelligence, we have the intellect. So it's up to us to start believing in ourselves and ignore the negative self-talk and believe that you have the capability of stepping up and managing your financial position. So I'm gonna ask you to ignore the negative self-talk and start believing in yourself. Secondly, I believe that financial literacy education is the key. It is very, very important to empower yourself through education. And I understand that many women feel afraid and feel scared to admit that they need help or to admit that there's an area that they're not confident in or to admit that maybe they made a mistake or to admit that they have been in a situation where they have been put into financial hardship because of what someone did to them. But in my experience, the best way for someone to move forward is to accept your weaknesses and ask for help and learn how to fix those weaknesses so that you can empower yourself with greater skills, greater knowledge, greater confidence, to take control of the decisions that you need to take control of. Financial literacy education is the key to changing this position. And there are so many ways you can learn. There are webinars, there are podcasts, there are seminars, there are books, there's money coaching, there's money mentoring. And I've seen firsthand through the financial literacy courses that I run with females and the money mentoring that I do, how life-changing financial empowerment can be. Because whilst it seems like such a small area of our life, the truth is our finances control every life decision we make. And stronger financial empowerment means that you have the ability to make choices in every other aspect of your life. And I'd also like to say that you're never too old to learn and it's never too late. So it's always, so it's important to set some time aside and find a form of education that's gonna work for you and start educating yourself. I'm also going to challenge you today to engage 
and take responsibility. Too many of us are stepping back and allowing someone else to make our financial decisions for us. I'm gonna ask you to participate in a little exercise for me now. And I'm gonna ask you to put your hands up if you know what your dress size is. I think most people in the room, oh, keep your hands up please. Um, I'm gonna ask you to keep your hands up if you know what your shoe size is. I'm gonna ask you to keep your hands up if you know what your superannuation balance is. That is very impressive, ladies. <laughs> I was not expect and I'm gonna ask you to keep your hand up if you know with 100% confidence that by the time you reach your desired retirement age, you're gonna have sufficient super to fund your lifestyle retirement. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. So, I mean, Clearly we do have some ladies here who, who are financially empowered. But the reality is there were still a lot of you in this room that weren't confident on your long-term numbers. Ladies, know your numbers. Make sure that you understand your current financial position and see it for yourself. Don't accept a response from your spouse that everything's going okay. A man is not your financial plan, ladies. And if you're relying on a man, you're leaving yourself very exposed in the case that your relationship breaks down or something happens to your spouse. The next one is investment. It's actually been found that 84% of Australian women feel don't feel adequately prepared for retirement, 50% fear they will outlive their savings, and 40% of Australian female retirees can't afford to have a meal at a cafe. Clearly, there is a problem, and Australian females are not adequately preparing for retirement. We need to accept that we can't rely on the government pension and superannuation. That's not the answer. The answer is we must take control and invest in income producing assets and build wealth so that we can have a passive income in our retirement years. The great news is that women make very, very good investors. We're very good at understanding investment options and clearly aligning them to our goals. And we're very good, in fact, better than men at mitigating and managing our risks. Finally, we owe it to not only ourselves, but our children to lead by example. Our children are not getting the financial literacy that they need in schools. We need to teach them. We need to give them the financial literacy skills that will see them go through life and have freedom and choices. As you go on your journey of financial empowerment, take your children with you. Allow them to be inspired by the transformation that you go through so that they too will feel inspired to become financially financially empowered and financially educated so that when they grow up, they can make the choices and have the freedom to do the things that's right for them. In conclusion, I do believe in a world where we can have financial equality between men and women. And each of us does have a role to play. It's time to step up, ladies, take charge and manage our finances. Thank you.